Hello everyone and welcome to ABB Robot Studio Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to use a simple teach method to define a path that the robot needs to follow. Then we explain how to write a simple program in ABB Robot Studio that will make sure that the robot follows the path. So let's immediately start. Once you start Robot Studio you will see this screen. If you don't see this screen, then you need to click on New. Then click on Project and over here do not select Include the Robot in Virtual Controller. We will add the Robot in Virtual Controller later on. So click on Create and be patient. Okay, so let's briefly explain how to add a robot to our workspace. To do that, click over here and you have several options. You even have collaborative robots over here, etc. However, over here for simplicity, I will add a relatively simple robot called IRB120 and click on OK. And here it is. The next step is to learn how to zoom. To zoom, you need to use the middle mouse button, that is the roller button, so roll up and down or forward and backward and you will be able to zoom. Another approach for zooming is to simply hold the middle mouse button and to move the mouse left or right. Then, to rotate, you need to press and hold Control, Shift, left mouse button and move the mouse left or right. Again, press and hold Control, Shift, left mouse button and move it left or right. And finally, to pan the view, press and hold Control and move the left mouse button left or right. OK. Next, let's learn how to add a virtual controller such that we can control our robot. To do that, click over here and click on From Layout. And let's select the default option, click on Next, click on Next, and click on Finish. And here you will see this controller status, it's currently red, this means that you cannot use the virtual controller. So be patient over here and wait until this indicator becomes green. Here it is. Let's try to move the robot just for a test. To move the robot you need to press over here and then you need to select the joint. For example, this joint and you can see by moving the left or right mouse button I'm able to rotate. Then select this joint, then press the left mouse button and you will be able to move it like this. Then click on this joint and you can you will be able to move it. Good! Now we can move the robot. The next step is to add an M defector. So let's add an M defector. Click here on import library and over here I will select this option training objects and I will select my tool over here. However, you can also add the smart gripper by clicking here and by choosing the smart gripper. However, let's add this welding end effector. And here is the welding end effector. You can only see its contours. You can see it over here also. Its, its name is my tool. The next step is to attach this end effector to the robot. To do that, click on the red end effector, do the right click, and then scroll all the way down and find Attach to. And over here, select the complete robot. And you will be asked, do you want to update the position of my tool? Click on yes, and here it is. Here's my tool. Perfect. Now try to move everything. Click here, and you will be able to move the robot as well as the end effector together. Okay, good. Let's continue. Next, we explain how to define a path that this point, that is the end point of the end effector, needs to follow. But before we define a path, let's make sure that the command for moving the robot will be correctly defined. Now, what do you see over here? You see something written move L. This is actually a command for moving linearly from one point to another one. So if you click here, make sure that move L is selected. You also have another option, move joint, that is, this is moving movement in a joint mode. However, let's select this option. Now, over here we need to specify the velocity. The velocity 1000 means 1000 
millimeters per second or one meter per second. This is too fast. Let's select, for example, V150. This will be 150 millimeters per second. Now, this parameter is the so-called zone parameter. Roughly speaking, this parameter defines how closely we will approach a point. And for the time being, I'm not going to explain this parameter in more details. Let's just select fine. Fine means that we will approach every point that we actually define. Next, let's continue. Here, my tool. Let's select my tool. Okay. And what is my tool? Well, if you click here on layout, you'll see my tool. So this means that we are actually controlling my tool, actually this point of my tool. And work object, let it be as it is. Okay, now this command is properly set up and the next step is to start defining the path. To define the path, click over here, then expand the controller, extend, expand TROV1, and here click on path and procedures. Do the right click and click on create path. And here is our path. Now, the next step is to define a set of points on that path. To do that, we will use a teach method. Roughly speaking, a teach method is a very simple approach for programming the robot. We will simply move or jog the robot to certain points and we will memorize them. And then what will happen behind the scene, the robot will move from one point to another, to a third one, etc. That is, we memorize the point and the robot will move from one point to another. So let's start from here. Now look what, I, what will happen over here. If I press this teach instruction, we will actually memorize this point. So precisely this point will be memorized. So let's start with that, teach instruction, and click on yes. And so if you now expand path, you will see a movement command, move linearly to this point. However, we can see that point also in other menu. We will explain this in the sequel. To see the defined point, expand work objects and targets, then expand work object zero, then expand work object zero OF, and you can see here the target point. To see it better, make sure that move and rotate is selected and then select the end effector and move the end effector along this line. And over here, you will actually see the point. Here's the point. And this is target 10. Okay, so let's define the second point. To decide to define the second point, click over here, then click the end on the end effector and let's move the end effector somewhere. For example, let's move the end effector over here. And then press here to memorize this point. And you can see that we have the second target point called target 20 and we have the instruction for moving move well to that point with this velocity 150 fine and my tool is defined okay next by using the same procedure let's define another point for example let's move the robot a little bit down and then again click on teach instruction click on yes to define another point here it is target 30 and move to target 30 and then Let's move the robot somewhere else. For example, let's try to move, for example, over here, and then do teach target and press yes. Okay, however, here there is an issue. You can see that target 40 is not actually being uh, defined. Actually, the instruction to move that, that to that target is not defined, so press it again and press yes. Okay, and then you will see target 50, so simply erase target 40 since we don't need it. Okay, cool. Now let's see what are the points we have. Okay, we have one, two, three, four points. And finally, let's close our path. That is, the last point of the path should be the first one. So this point should be the last point. So to make it to be the last point, simply Select it, do Control C to copy and Control V to paste, and click on Yes, and now just move this all the way down. Okay, and now let's test our path. That is, let's try to move the robot along this path. 
To move the robot along the defined path, click on Path, then do the right click, and over here you should actually see the option for moving the robot along path. So click over here and let's see what will happen. And you can see first point, second point, third point, fourth point, and fifth point. Okay, so let's do it again. Do the right click and then move along path. So we have first point, second point, third point, and fourth point. So that's it. 